Kai Tube. My name is Steve Al, and in the studio with me today, I have Barrister Solomon Obaze. He is the PDP aspirant for the Edo State House of Assembly of your Northeast Constituency. One, welcome, sir. It's good to have you in the studio. My pleasure. Welcome, and we also have with us in the studio another amazing personality, Mr. John Ekubiobo. I hope I got the name correctly. Right. Yes, he's. From Adolo World, welcome. It's good to have you in the studio. I want to get to know a little bit about you, um, your achievements so far, growing up and up to now, what you've been able to do. As you know, my name is Solomon Iro Obaze. I am the son of Gabriel Obaze. Um, my father from NPN have been one of the pivots of of Yah as a whole, and he's in his quest for development. He's always been someone who is selfless and have no greedy interest in things. Now, we're brought up under that culture of being truthful and being able to tell people exactly what you can give them. I read electronic telecommunication in Alchi Polytechnic. When I finished my secondary school, Benin Technical College, I was 15 years old because I did my secondary with scholarship. Okay. I, I could not be admitted to University of Ife because I was not going to be 16. Oh. My father now got me into Archie Polytechnic. And so, obviously, I graduated at the age of 20, 21. However, I went further to, to London and I did my LLB in law. I did my postgraduate diploma in law in all reputable universities there. And I became a member of the Chartered Institute of Legal Executives. And I'm now a solicitor of the Supreme Court of England and Wales. Okay. I currently have a partnership. I have a law firm that I still work with in London. I have been in Nigeria for the last six years, over six months every year. My father has a hotel, which is Countryside Hotel and I'm currently the CEO, and the respect of uh, ensuring that we have contribution to our community and our society here, I have also been able to, in conjunction with my sister, Mrs. Betty Sibo, set up a facility, a clinic in Iowa. But the interest of the constituency which contains these words is our main focus. And how do we make sure that improvements are not just said, but are seen is the common goal that I believe I can work with all the chairmen. I want to get to know your vision. What do you aim to achieve with this position if elected? We want to bring more development to Ovia Northeast, uh, constituency one for a start, but hopefully for the whole of Ovia, because uh, whatever is brought in any serious industrial scale to any constituency will benefit the whole of Ovia, because they are all close-knit communities. My vision is to, first of all, remove uh, the most politicized slogan that most people use. We are here to serve you. And when elected, they rule the people. We want to change that narrative. My training and my exposure gives me the confidence to say that because we understand, and just as it is in the outside world, that when you're serving the people, the interest of the people is paramount. In my vision, I have already said to them that I want to govern if elected in an inclusive manner, and that means all my ward chairmen, the executives, the youth leaders, are actually the people who have been elected. Because I'm going to have a committee that includes these persons, including the chairman of chairmen, and also ensuring that we stay in contact with our local government chairman, will mean that the needs of the people can be identified and addressed. But the one common goal is to industrialize Ovia, 
not by saying it on an election time, but by ensuring that for the whole four years you work with the people to achieve that goal. My vision is to make sure that the industrialization that we want to bring to Ophia in order to create employment, which is a way that you can only empower the youth, and only empower the youth, guarantee the future of the youth and the children of our leaders. That is my main goal. And we have started that in some private capacity even before now. So Mr. John, I'll come to you now. Um, I'm very sure there must have been one thing you saw in Barrister Solomon that made you want to support him and his vision. So I wanted to share that with us. So what's that one thing, or it can be more than one that you saw that wanted you to support him? Yes, of course. I saw so many, so many good things in him. First and foremost, is well, he's exposed. Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, is truthful. Be before I became director general of his campaign organization, I saw all those good things in him and I accepted the offer. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay, when you're talking about the things you had achieved and then the journey so far, you mentioned a lot about educational background. Well, I mean, there is. I just want to ask, why politics? Why the deviations into politics? Because everything, everything I've heard was law and, you know, certain businesses. But, so why politics? What's interesting about politics? Because if you, when you run businesses and you have employees, which I've done in London, I had pubs, I had car wash, I always had employees. I had an employment agency where I employ a lot of immigrants. Uh, you find that if you want to sometimes make a difference, you have to be part of the corridor. Now, I can do this much as a private person because of, it is my passion to see that people are out of crime, people have an enabling environment. But to be a legislator gives me a higher uh, uh, pedestal to ensure that these things, which is like my vision for the people, can also be enforced through the state level. And that is why I've been in politics. Well, I have, I'm a son of a politician. My father has always been in politics. But sometimes we stand back and look, and over the last two years, while I'm trying to do this, bring industrialization, like, uh, see what is happening with Inosi Motors that my father has already given plots of land for assembly of cars, which we know we expose the whole of Ophir. And I have personally taken it upon myself to travel, take the risk by route to Inewi to see to sit one on one with Inosi. We'll set up clinic. It's not gonna be enough. Because if you're a legislator and you know how to deal with your constituency votes, then you probably can bring more because it's not about relying on the government alone. But sometimes you can you can be you can be able to you, you are in a position to attract foreign investors and private investors. But you can do that even from a more powerful position if you are a legislator. It is different if I'm trying to on, uh, reach an agreement with a foreign investor or a private investor to say this is good for this community, for this part as an individual. But if I'm speaking to you as a legislator, knowing that any incumbrance or any challenges, you are in a position to see that it is dealt with, both from the legislative side and from the community side, because the community respects you because you are representing their interest. So long every project, everything you seem to do, seems to be for the interest of the people. We have to put our personal interest aside. So. Politics is not politics per se, it's being in a position where you can influence or you can actually bring your vision for the people to a reality. There's no question about that. You can only be in a better pedestal if you're in the corridors of power where you have influence on what bills are passed. And that is why I felt that being a part of the legislature will only help me to attract more and to be able to realize, which was even my father's dream, 
the full industrialization of Obia Northeast. Okay. And that is the journey we are. And we hope that uh, if we are successful, the people will see it for the whole four years of my stay. I know you cannot agree with me that the major part of the society or the community is the youths. And the, right now, the moral decadence is so much and it's, it's it has influenced every particular youth. And then we see them diving into fraudulent activities and you know the criminal rate. But I don't know what we can do to curb this um, menace in society and community. What yeah. you to plan to do to actually reduce this involvement the youth involvement in for the youth activities. I, if I take you way back, before this current government or even the successive government, there are times people have spoken to me in some forums in London before I even got to this point. And I've always emphasized, it's one thing, you can bring out the amount of soldier, the amount of police thing you want to do and say stop crime. You don't stop crime without creating an alternative. We've always said it that the employment and enabling environment that you create for the youth can dissuade them. There are a lot of youth who just want to be able to earn reasonable money that afford them what they for need the need, yeah. above the inflation level. Your basic uh, education, because not everyone has the brain power. So it's not first. From our exposure and from what we know from abroad, people can acquire skills. But if you are quite skills, you have to have a place for it. You have to know that you have a defined path. So I go to the current technical college uh, in Ubo and I acquire skills in automobile. I don't necessarily have to be working in a mechanic workshop already saturated. The vision, like for example, the setup of an assembly plant for which most of us people are benefiting, for which a hundred plus used by Strava was donated by my father to Innocent Motors. If you know that you are acquiring a skill that you're going to have a job in the assembly plant where you can rise up, you have very little attraction to crime. But those things are not there. So it's going to be difficult for you to do that. Now, my inclusive governance, like I said, the leaders, the world leaders uh, uh, themselves, delegates, they include the youth, the youth leaders. Now, you can't govern and say you empower the youth when you don't even know what their pain or their needs are. So because we have a committee that is going to include the youth, we believe that the youth can actually tell us what is really happening with them. Yeah. But without being told that you have a well structured salary job or you have a place you're going from when you graduate from having acquired those skills is a first deterrent. So that is why we believe that employment is key and the environment you create is also key. And that is how we want to work with the youth. It's not just by saying we empower the youth when the youth are not even part of your government. When you're speaking, you talked about a project, a health project that you, yourself and your sister have started. So are there other projects we should expect? Because most of... Yeah. So are there future projects or projects that you that kept in view, that you want to review maybe later? We asked for uh, uh, PPP with the, with the state government uh, two years ago. And obviously we have people where we can... When I say you can have private investors, we have people like Deepen and people that can invest okay. because they have uh, uh, the Sources, interest of yeah. the state at heart. We're coming from Ore, Oluku, UBTH. Then UBTH is your first secondary hospital. Yeah. Then you go from UBTH, you come all the way, you come to Sapleru. Then you leave Sapleru, you now go all the way to the law passenger. Now, if you look at the size of the community alone, talk about Sapleru and all that as is, that hospital is definitely going to be overwhelmed. The government has decided to try and make sure that clinics are used as first point of course. But we saw this vision before, before we even set up the clinic. Now, I did say to them in the stakeholders meeting that 
If people remember 40 years ago how God will look when Ubermuda put UBTH there, but look at the service he has for the people today. We need an honor state hospital, a by partnership with special hospital that will serve from Oluku or uh, because we have we've had many accident accident I mean, matters yes. from Oria and those oh, yeah. that we have to stabilize before we move them to UBTH. So those those are some of the projects that we will come up to still see how we do and maybe our position might still help us to let the government see that this is a facility because health is wealth. Everything people are doing, you have to be uh, healthy to be able to even pursue your aspirations or whatever your daily needs are. And that is that is project. So we have such projects that we will do. And we have other projects that we will have to uh, decide with me up to the to the world chairman what is their priority mm -hmm. in project because they will be the one I actually serving. I will not be imposing. I will be serving them. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we'll just take one word from last word, rounding off words from both of you, and then we'll conclude the session. So I'll start with Mr. John. So any wrap up words? Well, uh, I must thank you for this interview, sir foremost, and. Uh, uh, our vision is for Obaze Solomon to win the primaries the constituency one of the artists to be candidate in the Edo State House of Assembly. Thank you so much, sir. And Pastor Solomon. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. I hope that uh, people can identify with our views and our vision and people can especially the delegates can vote with their conscience. You can accept financial rewards from people. We're not going to be matching it, but we understand that if you want to have a future for your children, if you want to protect that future, you should put your own conscience. Let the person that you know is best suited for the position be your delegate and be the person you give your delegate vote. That's all I can say. Thank you very much, sir. I mean, with everything you both have said, there's one thing I'm just going to pick from this interview is how passionate you are about creating a change and causing a change in the community. And I guess everybody can see that as well and I can relate and place value on that. Thank you so much. It was so good having you in the studio. Thank you for all the words you spoke. And all right, thank you so much. This is Fanside 2. You've just heard from Barrister Solomon Obaze, and we wish you all the best uh, in your primaries you. and moving forward as well. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You. Do not forget to subscribe, Fansite Tube. Click, subscribe, and share. It has been an amazing time with you in the studio. My name is Steve Owl, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>